Do you have a Second Amendment right to open carry? Well, we're going to have to talk about this because it's a little complicated if you want to know the truth. So let's chat about it when we get back. Hey, folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court bar and author of the brand new best-selling book, Israel Disarmed, what the 10-7 attacks teach Americans about the right to bear arms. We must always remember the lessons from mistakes that others have made. Israel made a terrible mistake in allowing their citizens to basically become disarmed and discouraging private gun ownership in many respects. The consequence was catastrophic as 1,200 people were murdered on 10-7-2023 and hundreds of people were taken hostage. So we want to learn the lessons of the Israelis. I tell you uh, in the book, Israel disarmed the story that led up to that, uh, the history of the Jews, and the history of disarmament, not only in Israel, but across the globe throughout time. I think there's a lot of good information there for gun owners and the Second Amendment proponents. All right, folks. So I get this question a lot, and I've been holding off answering it, but I'm going to go ahead and try to do the best I can, explain to you what I think in the real world or where we are in Second Amendment jurisprudence today. Again, what I'm about to say here on this question of whether or not you and I have a Second Amendment right to open carry handguns is not what I want the answer to be necessarily. It's not what I wish to occur. It's kind of where I think we realistically are based on the uh, jurisprudence uh, of the Second Amendment and of the Supreme Court and of sort of the relevant history of firearms regulation speaking to uh, the carrying of handguns in public. So again, the question presented is, do you have a constitutional right under the Second Amendment to open carry handguns for, among other reasons, self-defense? Well, of course, to answer that question, we have to do the Second Amendment analysis of how to interpret the Second Amendment and to apply the Second Amendment and the right to keep and bear arms to a particular situation. So let's do that. How do we how do we apply the Second Amendment? Well, we know the answer because the U.S. Supreme Court in Heller first and then Nyserpa versus Bruin in 2022 taught us how to do it. The first is you start with the text of the Second Amendment, the text of the Second Amendment. Well, the operative text, of course, is the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Well, if you're an American citizen, and probably if you're a green card holder, you are certainly part of the people, as in the right of the people to keep and bear arms. So you satisfy the definition of people. And if you want to carry guns, whether it be open or concealed or whatever, obviously that implicates the text of the Second Amendment if a state actor, if a government actor, restricts the ability to open or conceal carry in any respect because it, it infringes upon, right? It implicates the right to keep, which means to possess, and the right to bear, which means to carry. So if there's a restriction of any sort on your right to bear arms, i.e. the right to carry them in public, well, then you have a restriction on the right of the people to keep and bear arms textually. When you have a restriction by a government actor on the text of the Second Amendment, you know the drill. The burden shifts, the burden shifts to the government. The presumption is at that moment in time that the text of the Second Amendment controls and that restriction on the right to keep and bear arms, i.e. the right to, to you know, the restriction on the right to carry, i.e. the right to bear arms, um, triggers the burden shifting to the government to justify that law, that regulation, that rule. And the presumption is, the presumption is that the rule is unconstitutional because it conflicts with the plain text of the Second Amendment. So what does the historical tradition of firearms regulation speak to on the issue of whether or not uh, you have a right to open and or carry, a concealed carry, uh, handguns? Well, obviously the Bruin case taught us that we have a right to carry in public arms for the purposes of, among, of, among other things, self-defense in anticipation of a potential confrontation to protect our lives and the lives of others. We know that for Nicer versus Bruin, this says you have a fundamental right to carry guns outside the home in public for self-defense purposes. Okay, And Bruin dealt with a New York State statute, which is a, Mau a May issue permitting regime, 
that basically said the government gets to decide who is allowed to conceal carry guns in New York State and who doesn't. And the Supreme Court declared that to be unconstitutional and inconsistent, inconsistent with the Second Amendment. Now, so let's get to the specific question, though. Do you have a right to open carry? Well, here's the reality. To answer that question, we have to look at the historical tradition of firearms regulation in the early Americas at the time of the founding. And I think, and I'm going to give you what I think is the answer, and then I'm going to give you what Bruin says so you can see what the Supreme Court says about this question. I think there's really two ways you can read the history at the time of the founding uh, and in the early 19th century, which is arguably relevant to this. The first is that we all have a right to open carry handguns. And that is the absolute right under the Second Amendment to carry openly. And that the government, therefore, has the opportunity or the option, if you will, to prevent us from concealed carrying because at the time of the founding, open carrying of handguns for self-defense was the norm and concealed carry was considered in many respects gauche or the sort of conduct that criminals engaged in. So in the early American life, you could argue, and the history would bear this out, I think, that we all have a Second Amendment right to open carry handguns and that the government can restrict the ability to conceal carry. That's one way to look at the historical tradition of firearms regulation at the time of the founding. And again, I'm going to read to you exactly what the Supreme Court says, so you don't have to take my word for it. You can see what the Supreme Court says about that early American firearms uh, history in terms of uh, firearms restrictions on carriage. Now, the second way to interpret that early American history is this, that you have a right a Second Amendment constitutional right to carry handguns in some manner, in some manner, maybe open or, open or concealed, but that the state, the government, has the authority to decide whether or not you have the right to either open carry or conceal carry. But you, they don't have to let you do both, but they have to let you do one or the other. But the state does not have to, is not required under the Second Amendment to have you have the option to do both or either. So under the second, the first view again is that you have a right to open carry and no right to conceal carry. But the second theory is that you have a right to carry guns in public for self-defense, but the state gets to decide whether or not that right extends to open carry or concealed carry, but either way, it has to allow you one option to carry guns in public for self-defense. Now, in my view for what is worth, and then we're gonna see what the Supreme Court says, I think it's probably the better view uh, to argue and the proper view if I was on the court, if I was faced with those choices, I probably would say, that uh, you have a right to be able to carry guns in public for self-defense and the state can pick the mode by which you do it. Either they can say everyone gets to open carry but no one gets to conceal carry or everyone gets to conceal carry and no one gets to open carry but they have to do one or the other. Now, of course, if I had my druthers, I would allow everyone and I would argue that the Second Amendment allows me to open and or concealed and I would approve and support the ability to do one or both or either or whatever you want and I would let it up to the people to make that choice. But I'm not here in this video to tell you what I want or what I wish, right? That's not the purpose of this channel, okay? I'm trying to tell you what I think is going on in the real world in the minds of judges and lawyers and commentators and scholars and historians. I'm trying to tell you what I think is going on because it does you absolutely no good to protect your rights and my rights if I blow smoke up your dupa and just tell you stories without any basis. We may make us feel good for a while, but it's like a sugar high. Ultimately, it's not going to be healthy and it's not going to be best for preserving our fundamental right to keep and bear arms and to protect all aspects of the United States Constitution, which is very important for American and human freedom.
Okay, so with those two options, let's turn to what the U.S. Supreme Court said in Nyserper versus Bruin about carry. Uh, check out this graphic. I'll read it to you, and you can see what it says for yourself, and tell me what you think the court is getting at here. The Supreme Court in Bruin writes, In the early to mid-19th century, some states began enacting laws that proscribed the concealed carry of pistols and other small weapons. As we recognized in Heller, the majority of the 19th century courts to consider the question held, these prohibitions on carrying concealed weapons were lawful under the Second Amendment or state analogs. Now, the government respondents, the government respondents here, unsurprisingly cite these statutes and decisions upholding them as evidence that states were historically free to ban public carry. And this is the key language, folks. Listen carefully. In fact, however, the history reveals, reveals a consensus that states could not ban public carry altogether. Hear what I just said? I'll read it again. In fact, however, the history reveals a consensus that states could not ban public carry altogether. So there you saw that first graphic, that first text from the Supreme Court in Bruin. And there you're seeing that they're distinguishing um, the authority from the state of New York and the pro-government gun control types in Bruin who had argued that there was these laws restricting concealed carry. But the U.S. Supreme Court in Bruin is saying, nah, you know what, that's not really appropriate here because in Bruin we're trying to determine is the right to keep and bear arms I mean you have a right to carry guns in public in one form or another for self-defense. And while you're saying to us pro-government, pro-gun control uh, respondents of New York State, etc. All you're really showing us is law at the time of the founding where there were restrictions on the concealed carry of weapons, but that doesn't speak to what we're dealing with in Bruin, which is, do you have a Second Amendment right to carry guns outside the home in self -defense, for self-defense, whether it be open or carried one way or the other? And as you can see, the Supreme Court is already trying to distinguish that or saying that, you know what, that doesn't get you where you need to be because it just says you didn't have a right to conceal carry. It didn't speak to carry generally or to open carry. So let's carry on and see what else the Supreme Court has to say in Bruin about the carry question. The government respondents cited opinions agreed that concealed carry prohibitions were constitutional. Here's the key language, folks. Were constitutional only if, only if they did not similarly prohibit open carry. That was true in Alabama with citations. It was also true in Louisiana, with citations. Kentucky, meanwhile, went one step further. The state Supreme Court of Kentucky invalidated a concealed carry prohibition. So that's the key language. You see what's going on there with what Bruin says? They're basically saying that but the states that prohibited concealed carry in the early part of American life allowed you or you were always had the right to open carry and because you had the right to open carry you had a right to carry guns in public to protect yourself that was totally kosher even if even if the state restricted concealed carry again going back to my thinking that the early american law speaks to as long as you have a right to carry either open or concealed the other one can be restricted or forbidden by the government again that's not what I would want. I think you should have the option to do one or both or either whatever and do whatever you want. That's my approach. But again, I'm not the law and I'm not the Constitution and I'm not a judge. So my opinion is fine, but it doesn't get us anywhere. So again, you can see where the court's head is at. Now, let's see what else the Supreme Court said about carrying in the Bruin case. The Georgia Supreme Court's decision in Nunn versus State is particularly instructive. Georgia's 1837 statute broadly prohibited wearing or carrying pistols as arms of offense or defense without distinguishing between concealed and open carry. To the extent the 1837 Act prohibited carrying certain weapons secretly, the court explained, that would be again, the Georgia Supreme Court explained, the Georgia Supreme Court explained it was valid 
i.e., to the extent the 1837 Act prohibited carrying certain weapons secretly, the Georgia Supreme Court explained that was valid. But to the extent the Act also prohibited bearing arms openly, the Georgia Supreme Court went on and stated it was in conflict with the Constitution and void. The Georgia Supreme Court's treatment of the state's general prohibition on the public carriage of handguns indicates that it was considered beyond the constitutional pale in antebellum America to altogether, to altogether prohibit public carry. So again, you can see where the Supreme Court's head is at on this. They're really saying that if you look at the Nunn versus State case down there in Georgia and, and you know uh, back there in 1846, I think is when the decision was, and the, the act was 1837, but I think the decision was actually in 1846. I'll put links to it down below so you can check it out. Um, what they're really again saying is they whatever the rule was, you could perhaps ban concealed carry but you couldn't ban open carry you could ban open carry but you could not ban concealed so again if you ask me what is my honest view of where the supreme court is at mentally intellectually and historically and where is the second amendment under the bruin heller bruin methodology of text first then historical uh, historical regulation or historical tradition of firearms regulation i think the answer is you have a right to public carry handguns and as to whether or not you have a right to open carry or concealed carry, I think that's ultimately uh, up to the state to decide whether or not one or bo one is prohibited. But the one thing the state cannot do under the Second Amendment is to say you cannot open carry and you cannot conceal carry. If they uh, if they ban open carry, they have to let you conceal carry. If they ban conceal carry, they have to let you open carry at a minimum, at a minimum. And that is exactly where I think the Supreme Court's head is at. So that's kind of where we're at, folks. I think there's no doubt, based on the Nyserpa versus uh, Bruin case, we obviously know we have the right to bear arms, which means to carry guns in public for self-defense, as to whether or not you could do it openly or concealed i think that uh the answer is you have to be allowed to do one but not necessarily be, be allowed to do both that's just kind of where i think the law is right now that doesn't mean that certain states i know a lot of states allow you to do either or both and that's perfectly fine and that's where it should be in my view that's where the law ought to be but as to where the law really is constitutionally well i think i've laid out where where i think it is right now uh and again you know maybe things will change down the road if uh uh, with the Supreme Court changing or one doesn't know. Uh, nevertheless, that's where we are, folks. And again, I uh, hope you learned something today. The Four Boxes Downer. Make sure you follow me on X at Four Boxes Downer. We have over 16,000 people follow me on X. So check it out. A lot more Second Amendment information over there. Make sure you subscribe and resubscribe. Uh, I appreciate the fact we now have 150,000 subscribers here on YouTube. We're going to keep trying to grow the uh, audience here. And again, uh, we'll talk to you real soon here at the Four Boxes Downer. Order is up. Table 2A.